welcome to JB and A today. I'm your host Nick Smith. I'm here with me today at our big kickoff for 2018 is Jeff Stedman, Vice President. Hello. No, Senior Vice President. You got to help me with this one. It's yes. a big title. Yeah, Senior Vice President. Business uh, Development. Business Development for Quantum. Phenomenal. Yep. That's a big title. Yeah. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, mine's just nerd. It's just a lot of words. <laughs> no, that works. That works. So we want to talk a little bit about Quantum. Okay. What you guys are doing right now, what yeah. you're excited about, and then a lot about what's coming for NAB. Okay. You know, what are the big pushes? So but before we do that, we want to know a little more about Jeff Stedman. Okay. All right. So let's fire it off with what was the first technology that you bought with your own money? Uh, first technology? Do you count an eight, eight track player as I technology? Do. Yes. That absolutely. would have been it. an eight track player. Nice. A little handheld or actually luggable more than anything. Okay. What was the album that went on it? Uh, Fleetwood Mac, Rumors. Nice. It's one of the first eight tracks that I had. That's a good choice. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of freedom in, in getting a, you know, it was funny because we had a, a client earlier that talked about a boombox. Yeah. Like that was, a, you know, that's, and that's, you know, the concept. This was the, the precursor to the, to to the boombox. Boom and did it have speakers in, in line? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. that's killer. Yeah. My first eight track was in the, was in the console. It was in the, in the car. In the car, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. rad. Nice. Yeah. And you had what, to switch the track sometimes in the middle of a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get to the other side. Yeah. That's it. Oh, eight tracks. Good times. Yeah. Good technology. <laughs> I think the next one after that would have been the Commodore 64. Probably. Okay, I had that. <laughs> I loved my 64. I think that's where we first started learning how to program. Yeah. Yeah, it was in the 64. Yeah. And, and that was the first thing I had that had a printer attached to it as well. Oh, right. I didn't get a printer until a while later. Yeah. Dot matrix, I think. Yep. If I remember right. I was right, in, right up there with my TRS-80. <laughs> Those are good, yeah. good old so, solid computers. All right, what, what drew you to the technology field? Yeah, I've, I've always, um, I always liked uh, sort of thinking about how technology is enabling people to do things. Uh, you know, some people look at technology as, um, uh, as tracking things and sort of collecting data or... or um, uh, processing transactions. You know, you, you sometimes think of computers as just processing transactions. I look at technology a little bit more from a human perspective as mm -hmm. what is technology allowing someone to do that they wouldn't be able to do without it, like mm -hmm. by themselves. You know, um, keeping track of transactions, you could do that on pen and paper or you could do it in a spreadsheet. Okay, that's all right. But for me, um, the side of technology that I get excited about is when I think of how someone's uh, either job or life is, is sort of impacted in a very positive way by technology. That, that's what draws me in. And, you know, if, if it's kind of just repetitive actions from technology, I don't get so excited when mm. it's more unique, you know, uh, enabling creativity or enabling uh, uh, discovery insight that you wouldn't have had before. I find that to be really fascinating. And that's sort of at the core of what quantum does. I mean, if you think about yeah, it, I mean, because you hit the, the side of that you talked about that isn't as exciting as the collection of stuff, yeah. right? The collection of transactions, but you guys do power a lot of creativity. Yeah, I think that's what drew me um, to, to quantum and, and, and in fact, to the technology for the media and entertainment market. You know, personally, I love this space um, and, and I, I know it's partly why I ended up at quantum because we are focused on technology that is enabling creative professionals mm -hmm. to do to create things to create movies and television shows and you know take a bunch of raw materials and package them up in a way that tells a story and you know to the extent that technology that i'm marketing and selling is helping improve storytelling improve movie making mm -hmm. i i find it just personally gratifying so it's like I'm, I'm lucky enough to be at a company where I've, I'm actually selling a product I, I really believe in. Yeah. And I, but I don't just believe in what the product does. I believe in what the product is enabling my customers to do. And that's when I find marketing fun. Fun yeah. because I, I could sell anybody a widget. I, it's when I see somebody doing something interesting with the widget that I get interested in. You know, it's, it's funny to me. When I tell people we work in the media entertainment industry, they only think of the set. They only think of the lights. They only think yeah. of well, what camera do you work with. It's, they miss the whole other side of it, which is actually the bigger side, yeah. which is all the people behind the scenes crafting the final vision. Yeah. And you guys power so much of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so many films, you know, when I look at some of the studios out there, I know... Hey, there's a quantum system behind that. Yeah, virtually every studio 
somewhere in that workflow of, of producing a movie is, is touching a Stornex, a quantum Stornex system at some point, um, or archiving their content on a Stornex system. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, developed over the years, you know, quite a presence in the, in the media and entertainment space, very strong in Hollywood, very strong in the, in the broadcast community, in the post-production market. And so, yeah, almost any project of, of any substance is going to, at some point in its life, Touch go, a go through a quantum yeah. system in, 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 in some respects. And so it's, again, it makes my job fun, in a, you know, to, to, to know that that movie, you know, I had, my technology had a, had a hopefully a little bit of a, a role to play in helping bring that thing to, to life. So outside of quantum, you know, or, or say outside of your own products, what technology do you see on the fringe of all this that you're most excited about? I think one of the, one of the emerging technologies that I find interesting is, um, is all this, um, I know there's a lot of buzz around it, sort of the artificial intelligence mm -hmm. space and machine learning. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of, of allowing uh, computing power to analyze things and, and sort of um, help humans get another step forward or, or do something that had been more of a repetitive task, yeah. I, I, I think it's really interesting. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see how the whole um, AI and machine learning and you know, how that all evolves, you know, what tasks really can be done by machines, what still needs a human involved. You know, obviously, the, the process of editing a movie requires a creative professional using their own eyeballs and their own brain to make those decisions. Um, but are there other tasks that are part of the, you know, the production process or the archiving process where you know, artificial intelligence can figure things out or complete a task on its own and, right. and do it accurately? I mean, um, there's a, I think there's a lot of potential, but there's still a long way to go. Right. It's still not as, as accurate as... It's funny, as we want. covered this on a recent show. We were talking about AI and where to implement that in the workflow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody with a lot of photos, if, if I was to say, hey, just give me five tags or just find, you know, all the faces and tag the faces, somebody with a large photo library could take them months, yeah. possibly even years if it's a really big photo library. Yeah. But with AI, we can accomplish that overnight. Right. You know, right. so it's really taking the, the ownership off of, you know, or the, the speed of delivery and getting to content faster by utilizing machine learning. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, video or, or you know, processing images, for, by a human, you're, you're basically, you're limited to real time. Mm -hmm. you, you can't really go any faster than real time. I mean, you're watching a video, you're, you're, it, it's going to go at the rate you're going to watch it. Maybe you could speed it up a little bit if all you're doing is looking for something. But generally, you're, you're going to process your collection in real time if it's a human. Yeah. And a human is only going to be really able to do one stream at a time. So if you're a, let's say you're a big movie studio with a big archive library, if you want to catalog the content in there, you're going to need a, you know, an army of humans yeah. operating at real time to do that. The flip side, to your point, you could potentially use AI and a bunch of computing resources to crank through all of that probably faster than real time. Yeah. And so you do get, to, you should get some efficiencies. Which actually makes an interesting story for a smaller organization with less staff. Yeah. Somebody with a small, you know, a, a church, a um, city, state government that doesn't have a big video staff but has a lot of content, we can effectively give them faster access to that content and quicker turnaround and yep. greater control over what they already own. That's right. Utilizing AI instead of hiring an army. That's, that's right. So we're putting people out of work. That's sad. But still, we'll move on. You know, we're making, so Allowing now, people to work at a different level. Yeah, there we go. Allowing them to be more creative with their content. Now, Quantum's doing a lot with AI. Yep. We're really doing... enabling it. I think you're one of the only storage vendors I see realizing that AI is necessary to the use of storage. And you're enabling great tool sets yeah. on that. No, that's right. And... You know, part of our vision is that um, you, we're not just a storage company. I mean, any, any storage company can store content. We're, we're trying to help our users get the most value out of the content that they're storing. And so, you know, being able to quickly retrieve it and use it in an interactive fashion as part of their workflow with the tool, the creative tools that they're using, that's a big part of what drives us. And then being able to understand the content that I do have so that I can either re-monetize it 
or I can pull it back and use it in this new piece that I'm working on. Um, you know, and we do think that, that there's a role there for AI running on the content you've already got stored to help you understand what it is you have. Uh, we've, we've encountered a, a lot of our customer base that has over the years amassed very large volumes of content, probably with minimal tagging. You know, not really understanding everything that they have. I've actually had one customer tell me that they, they, when they need a, a specific shot for, say, a B-roll shot, they'll send out a camera crew to go film it. They know it's in their archive already, but it would take them longer to go find it than to just go reshoot it. Wow. Can't and imagine the expense of that. Exactly. So, so you know, to the extent that, that we can enhance our storage platforms to be more intelligent, to, to add this whole other layer of value... By, by having storage that can process the content, extract out new metadata, allow you to search for things and find things, we think that's a great way to add value to, to, the, to the, you know, what a basic storage system is. So that, you know, ultimately, our goal is not to be a basic storage system. It's to kind of help our customers, like I said at the very beginning, like help do things they couldn't do before. Right, all right. So let's talk about NAB for a minute. Are, are we going to be showing any of this at NAB? Yeah, we'll have, uh, we'll have some of the AI uh, nice. and our partnerships in AI will be on display in our booth. Um, we'll, um, you know, one of the other aspects of our system that's relatively new is a scale-out NAS capability. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, having a multi-protocol storage platform on which any client from any OS over almost any protocol can all share the same content. Uh, we're going to have that on display, and that, that'll be a big part of, uh, of what we're doing. And then the, the one other thing that I I'm pretty excited about is uh, 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 a capability, where, a feature in our systems called Flex Space, a new, a new product called Flex Space. And, and what that is, is it allows us, we're, we're basically creating uh, shared cloud-based workspaces that multiple systems can use to share content. So if I have a production team in New York and I have another production team in LA, they each have their own storage systems locally to do the work locally. And if they want to, if New York wants to pass it off to LA, they can push, post it to this shared repository in the cloud and LA can pull it down and, and finish the project or, or keep going with it and push results back for New York the next day. And however people want to construct workflows, it, a little bit like... Uh, like a box on steroids for Stornext. Uh, that's that's a new product we'll be showing at NAB. So that'd be really interesting for even a global organization yeah. that's got locations around the world with different time zones where LA can start it, New York can keep working on it, and then it transfers over to London, it moves to another part of the world. So really keeping production running 24-7. Yeah. follow the sun. Which mm -hmm. we're all connected now in this great big internet-based world. So now we've got the ability to start using editors all over the country That's or right. all over the world. That's that right. Point. And taking advantage of the infrastructure that many cloud vendors have, have built, right? You, if you can use that infrastructure... It, to, to, uh, uh, to provide a repository that other locations can access, you know, as long as we're providing the data management layer to make the accessibility to that content simple, easy, secure, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's sort of kind of what we're trying to provide and then let the cloud providers provide the core infrastructure. Sounds like a, a great win for end users. And um, then add AI onto that, simpler connectivity with NAS. I mean, you guys got a really beautiful stack right now. Yeah. All I'm right, really so sure. NAB, so NAS, AI, Flexspace, yep. lots of great technology rolled into the bundle. Yep. The booth's in the same place this year? Yeah, we're in the South Hall lower. Okay, yep. so right at the center of all the great workflows. Yep. Right by the staircase there. Yep. Awesome, I'm looking forward to NAB. It's going to yeah, be an exciting too. year. It's going to be a good show for us. Absolutely. Jeff, thanks for being here today. You bet. Thanks, thanks for, for having forward. me. No worries. All right. all right. We'll catch you. All right, that's our show. We'll catch you on the next one, or we'll see you at NAB.